Well, this is a rather interesting little engine. Spotted this on eBay and I thought, ooh, that's a rather nice looking weed and vertical steam engine. Uh, looks to be in pretty good condition, missing the burner. It's also missing the crank, but other than that, everything is there. And uh, we have an intact sight glass, always, always a miracle. So yeah, <clears throat> I thought, well, I'll, I'll, I'll have a punt on this, which I duly did. And well, yeah. <laughs> It turned up, and it's as you can see. I haven't. All I've done to it is I've given it a wipe over, cleaned it up a little bit, just just main, mainly the inside. Someone used a candle or something to try and power this, and the inside of the firebox is sticky black goo all over it. So I cleaned that off. What else? Yes, the um, one of the tabs broke off that holds the engine frame to the firebox. So I've replaced. Uh, well, one of the tabs is still in still in, intact but I put a couple of 6BA brass bolts, screws in there, just to hold the engine frame on. Other than that, it's untouched. It's exactly as it came out of the box. But this is where it gets a bit interesting. I had a lot of trouble trying to identify just exactly what this engine was. Now I use the excellent Weedon Steam website all the time to help me identify Weedon model steam engines. It's run by Frank Campbell and I'll put a link in the description because it, it truly is an absolutely brilliant website. And I, I this one looked like a few different Whedons, but it, it, it nothing matched it up perfectly. <laughs> and the reason why I couldn't find it initially is that technically this isn't a Whedon. Yes, it's got the remains of a Whedon decal on the firebox, which as it comes around, I'll, 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 put, I'll use my pointy stick, but no, this technically isn't a Whedon, and I'll explain why. <laughs> let me let it come round, and we'll stop it there. Right. So, if you, you probably can't see it on the video, but this this was the decal which said Whedon, and and you can still vaguely see that it says Whedon on it. But what this is is a Whedon model number five hundred. Now, what makes this engine interesting is that. In 1942, Whedon Manufacturing was purchased by National Playthings. The whole whole lot, lock, stock and barrel. Now, National Playthings uh, dramatically reduced the range of model steam engines that, that uh, Whedon had previously sold. But one of the engines that they did sell between 1942 and 1952, which is when National Playthings discontinued manufacturing model steam engines is the Whedon 500, which is what you see before you. So yeah, it's it could easily be one of the last Whedon's actually ever made. Still makes it over 70 years old. Yeah, it is, it is interesting from that perspective. And the other interesting thing about this was, this was actually for sale on eBay in the UK. Now, nearly all my Whedon steam engines have come from the States either via eBay or from my good friend Stuart Owens, but they've all come from the States, which makes sense because that's where they're manufactured. So yeah, this is an, this is an interesting engine, but in very, very good condition, I think, as you can see. Now, as I said previously, it's missing the crank, which again with Whedon's, we'll close in on that a bit so you can see. Yeah, there should there should be a crank on the end of the crankshaft, obviously, which which has a pin on it, which engages with the end of the conrod. So, yeah, so we're gonna make that up uh, again. Whedon's had various different types of cranks. There was no one. What some some of them used disc cranks with pins. Some used um, a cast sort of soft white metal or lead type crank, but. It doesn't really matter. I, I'm, I'm fairly certain I can machine up a little crank for that and we can get this thing, get this thing running. Well, I spent a couple of hours on the lathe yesterday and managed to um, knock up a little disc crank for the Whedon 500. And there we go. Now, if you're wondering how I worked out what the stroke was, it was kind of guesstimation. <clears throat> now, bear in mind that this is an American engine, so almost certainly it was built to imperial measurements. 
I basically measured the full travel of the piston inside the cylinder. And then I reduced that down to the nearest hole fraction, which turned out to be five eighths, halved that, and that's how I got the position of the pin on the crank. So basically the stroke is five eighths and that allows the piston to move up and down with a small gap at either end. While we're on the subject of the cylinder and the piston, let's take a close look at it. Now, as you can see, the steam is fed by one single point, two one single point here. <coughs> However, there are ports, both top and bottom of the uh, engine frame. So let's have a look at the cylinder. So here you can see the cylinder, and quite clearly, this is a double acting cylinder. It has steam ports, both at the top end of the piston and at the bottom end of the piston, and it has a front cylinder cap. So, yeah, what's all this about then? Well, I think that basically this is a cost saving measure. Rather than have lots of different cylinders, they've made one cylinder, which is a double acting one, for use on their engines. But obviously you can use a double acting cylinder as a single acting cylinder, <clears throat> should you so wish. That means that they, they've only got to make one cylinder basically for any of their engines. So I think that's the reason why this is a double acting cylinder, but only working in single acting mode. Okay, well, <clears throat> all that's left to do is oil it up, put some water in it, give it some heat and see whether we can steam it. I have checked that the steam pipe is clear. Um, just blew a little bit of air through that. Um, the whistle is also clear. Safety valve appears to be working, at least the spring is. So, yeah, let's, uh, I'm not even going to attempt to run this on air. I'm going to go straight for steam. Well, the boilers are full. <coughs> Looks like we've got some steam. See whether it's ready to run. And it is, look at that. Beautiful, smooth as silk, no problem at all. Straight away, a little bit of wobble on the flywheel, but that's not really surprising. And the sight glass actually works. I <laughs> just, I mean, yeah, I'm so um, amazed and it doesn't appear to be leaking, which is, as you know, extremely rare for a retro steam tech model steam engine. But yeah, we've got good reading in sight glass and no leaks. Amazing. Let's see whether we can get anything out of the whistle. Ooh. Well, we can get something out of the whistle, but we're not getting any whistle whistle. Oh well, <clears throat> can't have everything. <laughs> it's running though, running a treat. Let's bring it around this way. Well, it looks like my guesstimation on the stroke was at least somewhere in the right ballpark because that's running fine. So no problem with that whatsoever. Well, there you have it, Whedon 500. Quite possibly one of the last Whedons that was ever made, under, under its own, running under its own steam. And I didn't try running this on air, so I didn't know whether this was going to work or not. <coughs> but I obviously needn't have worried. I mean, that really, it's very, very quiet. Oh, I'm, I'm well pleased with that. Now, don't get me wrong, you know, I enjoy working on model steam engines. This is one of the reasons why I do it, and I love getting them working again. <clears throat> but it is quite nice just occasionally to have one like this 500, where I didn't really have to do much work, just, you know, knock up a quick, very simple disc crank, and that's basically all I did to it. Did a bit of cleaning inside the firebox, and it, and it runs fine. It's, uh, Let's turn it around a bit. Let's slide and I'll, I'll turn the gas down a bit because obviously there's no regulator on this. But it's all, that little... Um, 
that little Bix burner is obviously more than adequate to to provide enough. I mean, you can see it. Yeah, you can see how small that the burner is. Might have just turned it down just a little bit too much by the sound of it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it does need a little bit, obviously. Let's turn this up a little bit more. There we go. It's always nice if you can get these to run slowly. Um, so obviously without a regulator it is not easy, but no, I'm well pleased with that. So there you go. The Whedon model number 500. All it required was a crank and it's uh, running superbly. Well pleased with that. Uh, oiling wise, I put a little bit of steam oil inside the cylinder <coughs> and obviously on the engine faceplate there. And then a couple of small drops of three and one on the crank. And that, uh, that's it. That's all you need to do for oiling. Doesn't it run lovely? Now I'm well pleased with that. <clears throat> well, I hope you've enjoyed this video on the Whedon model number 500. Don't see these very often, so I'm very pleased to have it in my collection. As always, thanks for watching. Cheers.